In our discussion on thermal sigmatropic shifts, we said that under thermal conditions, it's the 1,5 sigmatropic shift that will take place. But under photochemical conditions, it's the 1,3 sigmatropic shift that will occur, and let's see why. So let's suppose we have a propene molecule as shown. So if the propene molecule is exposed to some light source, our sigmatropic reaction will take place in which the H atom found on the first carbon will basically migrate in an intramolecular fashion in a single step onto this third carbon, and this bond will shift onto this position as shown in this product molecule. Now, what exactly does the transition state of this reaction look like? Well, basically, the transition state is the same as in the thermal case, except in this case, this H atom migrates in the middle of this uh, area between the first and the third carbon and we have a partially broken bond between carbon and H atom here and the partially formed bond between the H atom and this carbon here. So why is it exactly that under photochemical conditions this reaction takes place but on the thermal conditions the 1,3 sigmatropic shift as shown does not take place? Well, to answer this question, let's begin by looking at the pi molecular orbitals of the propene molecule. So propene contains three carbon atoms, so we combine three 2p orbitals to form three pi molecular orbitals for propene. We have phi 1, in which all the negative lobes are on top, all the positive lobes are on the bottom. We have phi 2, where we have the blue lobe here, the green lobe here, a green lobe here, a blue lobe here, and there is a bonding, anti-bonding taking place, so we have a canceling out in the middle. And phi 3 looks like this. Now, how many electrons are found in the pi system within our transition state? Well, two electrons are found in the pi bond, and one of those electrons co comes from the breaking of this bond here. As the bond breaks, one of the electrons end up in the, ends up in this pi system. And so, to actually determine what the highest occupied molecular orbital is under thermal or photochemical conditions, we have to fill up these orbitals with three electrons. So two electrons go into the lowest orbital, our phi 1, and the last electron ends up in phi 2. So this is the highest occupied molecular orbital, the HOMO, under thermal conditions. But what happens under photochemical conditions when the energy source is light? So basically we take light, we shine light onto our system and what happens is this electron gains enough energy if the frequency of light is just high enough and it transitions into the higher in energy orbital R phi 3. So in the photochemical case, the new highest occupied molecular orbital known as the photochemical HOMO is this phi 3. So under thermal conditions, it's this that acts as the highest occupied molecular orbital, but under photochemical conditions, it's the phi 3 pi molecular orbital. So let's see why this reaction actually takes place under thermal conditions by examining the interaction between the HOMO and our LUMO within the transition state. So, let's take a look on the reactant side. On the reactant side, we have carbon 1, carbon 2, and carbon 3. Now, this H atom is bonded to carbon via a sigma bond, more specifically a hybridized S P3 bond. So we have the 1s orbital of our H atom, the p orbital of the carbon, they bond overlap to form our sp3 hybridized. But as soon as the reaction begins 
begins to take place under photochemical conditions when we basically add light into our mixture we see that our 1s orbital begins to move away from this carbon and begins to move towards the third carbon and so the transition state looks something like this so as our 1s orbital of the hydrogen atom which is our lumo the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital begins to move to the middle this becomes a 2p this becomes a 2p and so we basically have our highest occupied molecular orbital which looks like this so we have a negative blue region a positive green region here a positive green negative blue and a negative blue positive green and so notice that as our 1s begins to move away at the same exact time it begins to overlap with this green lobe of the third carbon and so we have a bonding interaction taking place here that is partially broken and a bonding interaction here that is being partially formed so we have a partial overlap here and a partial overlap here now when this lumo moves all the way onto here it basically overlaps completely and perfectly with this blue uh, with this green lobe of the third orbital and we form an sp hybridized and the pi bond shifts onto this location and we form this product and we see that this type of uh, suprafacial interaction in which our lumo basically detaches from the bottom and reattaches uh, from the bottom on the opposite side this suprafacial interaction can only take place under photochemical conditions because only under photochemical conditions do we have this perfect symmetry green and green and green and green so on the photochemical conditions the new photochemical homo phi 3 orbital has a perfect symmetry the 1s orbital the lumo of the hydrogen can move directly to the third carbon's 2p orbital via a suprafacial manner meaning from the bottom of this slope to the bottom of this slope so it moves a minimal distance now what about thermal conditions why exactly does in this reaction take place under thermal conditions well on the thermal conditions it's the phi 2 orbital that acts as the highest occupied molecular orbital so even though our reactant will look the same as in this case the transition state will not look like this the transition state will have a different orbital symmetry this carbon will still have a blue and a green but the second carbon will have a cancer of low and the third carbon will be switched the bottom will now be blue and the top will now be green so when our 1s orbital basically reaches the midpoint section we'll have a partially broken bond a poor overlap here and we'll have an anti-bonding overlap here because we have a green our positive wave function and our a blue the negative wave function so that creates a destabilizing anti-bonding interaction so in this case on the thermal conditions we see that the suprafacial interaction cannot actually take place only our antarafacial interaction can take place in which our 1s has to move all the way in the following fashion so from top from bottom to top and we know as we discussed in the previous lecture on tarifacial interactions to, uh, bottom to top do not actually take place because they are very unlikely and so we see that under thermal conditions the one three sigmatropic shift does not take place but under photochemical conditions the one three sigmatropic shift for propene does take place because it has a perfect orbital symmetry for a superfacial interaction between our highest occupied molecular orbital and the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital uh, orbital all this 1s orbital has to do is move in the following superfacial superfacial fashion